Okay. Good to go. Welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee of July 31, 2018. If you will join me in pledging allegiance to our republic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first on the agenda is our standard introduction of our membership. Uh, Steve, if you would lead us off. Stephen LeBranch. Bob Ladd, Village District Representative. Frank DeLuca, uh, School Board 90 Representative. Brian Warburton. Blake Wolf. Chairman Jones. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen Representative. David Marr. Okay, and we have the Bank Brain Trust of Town Management here with uh, Christy Pulliam and Town Manager Welsh and his uh, deputy, I guess is the new name, right? Deputy Sullivan. <laughs> um, before we do the public hearing, which is next on the agenda, uh, there's been a couple of updates, I guess, which will be formally reflected at the literature session on Monday night of next week, right? And the changes essentially is the number that we're borrowing is $58,982 more than we discussed at our last meeting. And that number, that additional number, reflects how much additional uh, monies we're able to borrow through the state involving fund for this effort. Uh, the other uh, germane item is the, uh, it's no longer considered to be a 30-year bond. Apparently the SRS are not available for 30-year bonds. Uh, so we're looking at a 20-year bond. As a consequence, we'll be naturally paying this off in 20 years as opposed to 30, so our annual debt service will be higher. Instead of seven and a half cents uh, per thousand, will be 9.8 cents uh, per thousand, almost 10 cents per thousand. And you have the number from the average $400,000 house there, uh, Regina? $39.20. Thank you, Regina. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, with that, we have uh, eight members here, just as we did last time. If anyone wants to discuss these notations uh, that we're expecting to be changed at the little session on Monday, uh, feel free to do so now. If not, I will simply open this up for a public hearing at this time. Anyone from the public wishing to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, I close this public hearing at this time. Next on the agenda is old business. Uh, does anyone have any old business? I have a few notations here. Um, one is the Tom B Budget Workshop. Uh, if you'll note, um, I have completed uh, all of our calendar dates uh, some time ago. It's up on HamptonBud.com. If you look under the meetings, you'll see scheduled meetings there as a submenu. And uh, inside of that, you will see that I took was last year's um, items in terms of who's coming and when to, to give testimony to us on their budget. Uh, I took that right off of last year's. Last year we did something different uh, than we had previously in that we made motions based on the DRA, Department of Revenue Administration's chart of accounts. In all previous years we'd always did it based on municipal chart of accounts. Substantially different in some mm -hmm. cases. And so this year, we decided that we're, maybe we've got to do is the next step, which is to actually have the people come in in the order of the DRA, because it caused some confusion in terms of making the motions last year. So we're hoping to make up some few changes there. Uh, so I hope to meet with Christy and work that out, because I understand, Christy, you're going to be adjusting the budget book to reflect the DRA line items, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, well, our budget book's going to look a little bit different. I don't know if you want to speak on that or not, Christy. We didn't ask you to ahead of time, but feel free to chime in if you wish. Uh, and there's another element here, too, is that we had, we're expecting the uh, budget books uh, right around uh, Halloween, I believe. And several days before Halloween, like three to five days, I think, we're actually going to get the Excel spreadsheet, which is what's used to generate the budget book. Okay. 
Now, once we get that spreadsheet, we can start looking at it. And when I, one of the things I hope that we can look at is the um, areas that we don't need to hear testimony on. Remember, our theme this year is minimal meetings. We want to meet only on important items as much as possible, make no more motions than are, than are necessary. So, I mean, if we don't think the, I don't know, I just picked the Mosquito Control Commission. If we don't think we need to hear testimony from them, let us decide in September, or as soon as we can, so that we can let them know that feel free to not come in. If they want to come in, we'll still let them come in, of course, but uh, we don't want to have people coming in just to have them come in. We're all, we're all okay with that? Okay. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to meet with Christine. Uh, Christy, uh, I assume September would be the best time for you to, to do that, Christy, uh, and, uh, and coordinate with Fred, I guess, in terms of the various department heads as to when's the best time for them to come in. And at that time, I'll be able to update the schedule that's on HamptonBud.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any comments or questions on that? Okay. Uh, cable TV. I have this on here because there are two, uh, well, actually one, primarily related to, and that's the cable TV contract expired in February. And I believe it was then extended uh, by the Board of Selectmen, I think indefinitely, though nothing was specified. Um, and so right now we're working on that automatic extension, if you will. And uh, there has been a cable renewal committee that has been created uh, that apparently is going to be working on the uh, renewed contract. I have no idea when it's going to be done or whatever. Um, it consists of representatives from Board of Selectmen, Cable Committee, and the uh, school board, SRU 90's uh, School Administration Unit 90 representative is Frank DeLuca. Uh, and uh, so I, I don't know how we're going to as a budget committee, because I assume this contract, once it does get done, is going to be a warrant article, since it deals with money. It does not. So you're not anticipating, Fred, that there'll be... By statute, only the Selectmen can approve That's correct. the contract. So the voters have no authority on it at all. They ceded that authority when they voted to allow the cable TV in town. Okay, all right. So I guess we don't need to worry about it all that much then, except as citizens, uh, but not as a committee. Okay. Uh, the other thing relative to cable TV was the fund status, because there's a lot of changes going on, as you can see here. A lot of money being spent appropriately, hopefully, I think. Um, but I think, as a general rule, we need to look at our funds as a whole, all of the funds. Right. Um, and it would be great if we could get a fund summary, Christy. Is that possible sometime maybe in September? Uh, as for all of our funds? The funds that, all the funds. Ones that are on the financials, sure. Yeah, all the funds. So we can have a, a, a grand picture of what our financial status is. Uh, and that's basically all I had in that space. Any other comments or questions on that? In reference to that. <clears throat> I heard of something in the reference to uh, having ability for the public to use the system. Do you have any uh, comments or thoughts or help me on that at all? What do you mean? I mean, is the public access channel was brought up last night? Yeah. Well, um, as I understand it, the agreement that the town has reached with Comcast forbids uh, public access on the government channel. That's yeah. correct. And, and the school channel. Well, anything but government or whatever. Government means, I guess, government meetings, right? Uh, and I guess education means something that's of an educational nature, I guess. And we don't have a public access channel. Uh, apparently, there is provisions in the contract. I haven't read it. There's provisions in the contract, apparently, for creating a public channel, which were generally outlined last night. So. So is the one being created? Not that I know of. Fred, do you want to say anything? We, we've had no one petition to create one. Is that what just required a petition? They have to petition the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the Selectmen have to vote, and then Comcast can accept it or reject it within 18 months. Okay. Is there a number of signatures required on the petition? No. Okay, just, <coughs> just a request, it's not basically. It's like a town meeting petition. It's just a regular request. Okay. All set? Yeah, thank you. Okay. <coughs> NHMA is always an exciting topic here. As you know, we uh, we tried to uh, deal with uh, clarity on protocols earlier in the year. Um, 
you know, we did get clarity at some point on the um, interface between the budget committee and the department heads. Uh, and that went through and was approved by the board of selectmen. However, the, uh, the same process or procedure for NHMA, which we thought was in place, kind of like vaporized by the time we got to the board of selectmen. So uh, we're operating on whatever was always been, as it was said, I think. And I'm not quite exactly sure what that means, but um, I think we need to um, maybe think about NHMA a bit more because it is in our budget. It is noteworthy. I'll just give you some, what I think is interesting history on this. Um, a few years ago, 2014 to be specific, David Lang came in to the delivery session and zeroed out the uh, money for NHMA. Uh, the argument essentially was they don't represent us. I'm quoting Dave on that. And uh, that overwhelmingly passed that delivery session to zero them up. And for various reasons, I can get into if you wish, but basically they got paid anyway. Um, and, and so they've never not been paid. Um, but as a consequence, the budget committee invited or requested that the executive director of NHMA come into the budget committee and explain just who they are. And they did. We spent a couple hours in here. And I think we learned a lot of stuff there. And I just want to highlight a few of those things. Um, one is that the, the, um, the NHMA is a lobbyist group for the Board of Selectmen. That's why the Board of Selectmen have control in this situation. Okay. People who pay the dues they don't have control, that is to say the taxpayers. Uh, it's not a question of them deciding how the interface occurs. It's the Board of Selectmen because it's the Board of Selectmen's lobbyists. We also learned that, that in that meeting that there are a number of lobbying groups that are paid out of our budget. Our town manager has a lobbying group. Tom clerk has a lobbying group. They're much smaller in size. I think town manager's lobbying group, what, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, something like that? 100 dollars. Yeah, 100 bucks. Yeah. But the NHMA dues is like over $17,000 now. Substantially more, and we did we did recognize that they provided something more than just lobbying. I mean, they provided a lot of educational opportunities. They had the, the seminars that many of us are familiar with. Some of us have went to, or gone to. Uh, they also had webinars that are out there, um, and and they provide legal advice um, to all officials in in a town that is a dues paying member. And um, but that's the way it was presented to us in 2014. In addition, we discovered something that was new to everyone in town, apparently, and that is because of the enormity of the dues that this town of Hampton pays, that we're entitled to one free seminar per year. And so for the last, I think, three years, uh, we've had them come in and do a seminar. Two years, they came in specifically for the Budget Committee last year, they came in uh, for the Board of Selectmen, and they did a, I think, a 91A, centric uh, seminar. This year appears that there will be no exercise of that free seminar. So that's kind of the background as I see it uh, of what the NMHE is and that we're paying dues to them. Right. And the funny thing is, even if, you, even if we zero them out before the delivery session, it won't count very long because the dues is due in January, right, right Fred? That's and so. Because they know the game, you say they bill them out in January, and they know damn well they'll get paid because there's nothing we can do to stop it. We have to wait a whole new cycle to get that stopped. So on the basis of, of all that, we agreed uh, as a budget committee that it was worth keeping because of the free seminars, the free legal advice available to all officials. And now that the protocol has changed, we may want to reconsider our position on that as a committee. So that's why I'm bringing that up. Also, um, there is some need for clarity relative to the NHMA protocol, in my opinion. I understand that the requirement that the chair needs, or the chair, the, <coughs> excuse me, the chair of the budget committee needs to go through the board of selectmen with legal questions they may wish to get answered from NHMA. 
but in terms of other interfaces of NHMA, I'm not sure whether that's also required. I went to a, may I speak? Sure. I went to a seminar last year <clears throat> on the 91A. There was a gentleman that came here, the lawyer spoke to all of us. Mm -hmm. And ironically, I, <clears throat> a month later, went to one in June and Stratham, a whole day session. And the gentleman that was presenting to us presented in the morning from the state. And then the, <clears throat> the other lawyer was a female woman, and she did a great job also in the afternoon. But what came out of that, there were, I think there was like about 80 people there, and I think there were about, a proc I'm making, to best my memory, probably about 14 different cities or towns that were represented. <clears throat> that came to the session. It was an education type session. But it came up that, and I think I'd heard this before, that we are not a, which, which kind of rang my bell when you just said something, we have to get permission to go there. They made a point, they being the lawyers, that everybody there, if, if you have a question legally, call us up. We are representatives. We're here for you. Mm -hmm. People were there from the budget committees, some selecting there, and other various members were there. But everybody had, except for, my understanding is, just Hampton. Did they actually say except for Hampton? Yes, I believe so. That's what got me into the discussion with the, the lawyer that we had seen the prior week. I can't forget the gentleman's name. So I brought it up and I said, well, why can't we do it? He said, because the Board of Selectmen have cut you off and you can't, you're not allowed to. You have to go through this particular thing. So I brought it up two more times with him mm -hmm. during the course of the morning, during free time kind of prod again and try to get him. And I said, so everybody else can hear in this room can call me them up except me because mm -hmm. I have to go through a door. I go, why is that? And that doesn't sound right to me. And it still doesn't sound right to me. So I would like to, with the representatives, at least with me, Jane look into the like, it sounds kind of odd. <clears throat> is there something being hidden that we kind of call the law? No, they're only giving legal advice about the law. It's nothing else. We're not making agreements with them. We're not discussing anything behind the scenes. It's a, if you get a, if you don't understand the law, we're here to help you. <clears throat> but we in Hampton can't do that. And he told me three times. In fact, the third time is not Janine. I think was, I was getting a little bit irritated, which was making me happy, by the way, <laughs> <clears throat> because I was trying to get him to say, well, maybe we should pursue it a little more. We're trying to do it diplomatically, but that's it. Oh. So. This might be an opportunity with Regina here, and you bring it up that we can maybe find out if we don't have an answer now. Why do we have to go through you? Why can't we on our own just call up? It's all about a legal question. It seems like there's something shady going on, and hopefully there isn't, but it seems very, very odd to me. Did I, did I say that the seminar leader suggested that you follow up on that? He did not suggest I follow up on that. I'm just, I was hoping he what what I was saying. I was hoping he would follow up. Oh. But he was basically saying his hands are washed. Just selecting. I said no. But everybody else they could ask legal questions, which does it didn't make any sense to me. Well, his hands are tied. Make any sense to me. His hands are tied because they take the direction from the board selectmen because an HMA is the board selectmen's baby. Okay. The governing body in every. And every dues-paying municipality is uh, the boss, essentially, of that interface with NHMA. And that's why his hands are tied. I mean, the seminars I referred to earlier in, 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 in the, in the uh, presentation they made to the budget committee in previous years, every one of them, they all said the same thing. Except, they never said, Except in Hampton, you never said that. It was just like, hey, just call us up. You know, when you have a question, call us up. To my understanding, we were the only one. David, That's I'm going to talk to my chairman that. about this. Please. Okay? Thank you. And until that time, I'm not going to say anything, Don't. but I'll talk to my no, chairman. No. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. No problem. So, um, I think I, I would like to go into the selection myself and, and see if we can work this out. Uh, yeah, I feel like I need to offer some historical perspective here, and I absolutely am in agreement with Mr. Maurer. Um, back in 1995, when I then chaired the Board of Selectmen for three terms, and through 2004, Mrs. Bridal was also on the Budget Committee, 
there wasn't any problem with any elected board calling the NHMA for anything. And one of the reasons that retired Captain Lang brought this issue up at deliberate session, and I think it's going to come up again this year, as a matter of fact, I know it is, and it should, to eliminate the, the money we pay to them is due to the fact that taxpayers are paying this money. And it really is not anything to do whether it's Regina or the current Board of Selectmen. One board should have absolutely no say in other boards talking to an organization as you just referred to. I was actually horrified when I was running for budget committee this year and following this up. And people would ask me on the street, and I said, this was never the case. It, 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 and here's the issue that I think is funny about it. Let's say Chairman Jones or Representative Pluff or whoever have two questions a year, or Mr. LeBrinch, and let's say we don't have any. It's not the type of thing that you're calling up there all the time. Even years ago when Mike and I served together, there were those times where I would pick up the phone for some advice, three minute call, and we'd share with the Board of Selectmen. The Budget Committee always, and Mrs. Broder Russell will attest to that, they always used the NHMA in a good way. It wasn't anything that was adversarial. The perception in the community is dictatorial. I have to tell you right now, this is not something the Board of Selectmen should be deciding on a separate elected board whether or not they're gonna do anything. And I, I feel badly because the NHMA has served a great purpose for many years. I actually enjoy dealing with Judy Silver and others. How this got off track, and I can tell you even in, to the point where Mr. Griffin one in 2004, it was even several years after that that they still were allowed other boards to call the NHMA. So something happened in the last six, seven, eight years. And I think it's unfortunate because that is the feedback that I get. I get asked by a lot of different people on a lot of different things. And Regina and I have had a conversation about this. Um, I, I would hope that the, the current Board of Selectmen would revisit this. In, in, in uh, commendation to Chairman Jones and, and Mr. Pluff, and Mr. Pluff has been a friend and a colleague for over 35 years and well representative and Mr. Jones as well, they tried to come up with a solution. And it was my impression here when I left here in March that the solution was at least for the time being that members of this committee could go through, you know, and you and, and Mike could call up an HMA and then all of a sudden, I'm watching the Board of Selectmen meeting, and some of the comments were, oh, we're going to keep it the way it is. It's always worked fine. Well, that's not the issue. And to Dave's absolutely great point, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't sit well. And, and as I said to you the very first meeting I was here, if it's legal, let's go with it. If it's ethical, absolutely. I don't see either one of those happening in this case, denying the Budget Committee or any representative thereof taking a minute to call up for an answer to a question because I will tell you and I will be one to ride home and I'm absolutely in agreement with Captain Lang. If we're, we're going to go this route, let's get rid of it. Because what we're saying is one person or a few people have the decision to make about something that the taxpayers pay for. And I, I really think I could tell you, Mr. Chairman, you hit on a, a good point tonight. Um, we're we're going to get rid of it this year. It's going to happen if this continues because the public is just looking at all of these expenditures um, and what's and we're all going to be looking at them really hard. And so we've got to set rules in place that are, that are finite, that are important, and that are legal and ethical. This thing here is just does not sit well, uh, Regina. And I appreciate you bringing it back to Chairman Bridal, but I hope they're all watching because I will tell you uh, that's the perception that I'm hearing in the community, and I actually agree with it. So I wanted to just offer, uh, not take a lot of time, you know, from a historical perspective, it was never an issue. Always worked out well. It, it wasn't an issue. So that's all I wanted to add. Anybody else? I think that uh, <clears throat> we, we should try to work, you know, work this out amicably. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't think we should take a position or fix our minds on whether we should zero them out or not. Do we have a discussion on it? Um, I think you should let me talk to my chairman and my board before we, we go we any are, further. We are not preventing you from doing that. Right. Okay. Right. We don't prevent people from talking to you. Ever. Do we? No. Uh, so, we don't need permission. Right. Well, right. I just wanted to let you know. But what I'm asking the committee is whether or not they wish me to pursue this 
as amicably as possible sure. to find a resolution that meets uh, uh, everyone's uh, needs. You know? Absolutely. I think I'll be still trying to, to achieve what was agreed to previously back in the spring. Uh, but there may be some modifications that sure. we hadn't considered that we'll, we'll take about. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to get a uh, get that resolved before our September meeting. But uh, frankly, it's summertime, and I want to enjoy the summer, so I probably won't get to it until early September. Um, and that's it under old business. Anyone else have any other old business? Uh, new business, I have but one item. Um, you know, there has been some criticism of the Board of Selectmen about their authority to make the decision they made is unquestioned in my mind. They have the authority to do it. Whether it's right to do it or not is, I guess, the question, isn't it, Brian? And I'm not, I'm not sure I'm in agreement with that. I don't, where does it say it's legal for them to do it? I mean, we just heard from David, it was every single community that went to this conference that represented lawyers from NHMA said we were the only one. Is there a document that says, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. It's, it's a matter of the operations of NHMA. That's the NMHA's oh, operating procedures. That. That's where the that's where the authority is derived from. Um, the fact that Hampton's being treated special is because we're a special community. <laughs> and, and so yeah, you could look at it from a positive lens. <coughs> uh, but the truth is, Brian, you bring up the, the larger point is uh, kind of a philosophical one. Should taxpayers money be paid for lobbyists well, that's of any type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to discuss that uh, as we get into the uh, budget season. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. But I, I do want to note that historically, uh, there is something positive to say about the Board of Selectmen, and, and we should take note of that as well. Um, you know, oftentimes we praise other entities for being more transparent and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But in one instance, the Board of Selectmen is more transparent than any other, and that is in the printing of the tally votes on the ballot. Uh, every year, even when the Budget Committee and the Board of Selectmen are in heavy battle with them, they still choose to print tally votes of their own votes as well as the Budget Committee's votes. And I think Absolutely. we should commend them for that. Yep. Uh, and I would I encourage uh, the committee members to suggest to SAU 90 that uh, you know, with a simple vote on their behalf, they too can line up for accommodation on this point. Yeah. So, any other new business? Okay. Seeing none, the next meeting, uh, given that we've already divulged what we expect to be uh, the, the amendments at the delivery session on Monday night relative to the amount and time frame of the bond. Um, and given the lack of public comment on uh, both last night and tonight, I think that it's unlikely that there will be a need to call the traditional budget committee meeting prior or after the delivery session. So I will not be calling for a meeting after the delivery session. And thus, our next meeting will be September 18. I have contacted SAU 90, um, Superintendent Murphy, uh, and she has acknowledged that date, and she'll be coming in to do her annual review at that time. Uh, and with that, give Mr. The Chair, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn at 7.29 p.m. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.